Hello, Allegheny Jam banjo students. Mr. Jones here. And I thought for this session, I would go through kind of a recap of a lot of the skills you've learned. And uh, if you are familiar with most of these, it's great. And hopefully all of them, but things that you can go back and watch this video over a few times and check all the skills you know and the ones you need to work on. So first of all, a lot of basic stuff I think that you should know. And like I say, uh, use this video as a checkpoint for yourself to kind of say, okay, yeah, I could work on that, but I know that. So feel good about the good stuff and feel excited about the things you'll learn. So first of all, I'm in a D tuning. So first of all, what are the notes of a D tuning? Let's start with that. Just the open strings and by open, what does that mean? That means you're not fretting the string, right? So let's start with the numbers of the strings. The short string is what number? Number five, correct, okay? And that in a detuning is what note? An A, so we'll call that a high A. The fourth string is the thickest string you have. Remember the fifth string, short string is the closest to your chin, so to speak. Fourth string is a D, that's your low D, a powerful note in a detuning banjo. So the fourth string's a D, a low D, Third string is a low A. You can hear that five is a high A, four is a low D. Third string or middle string is a low A. And then you have another D on the second string, a high D. And the first string is just a whole step, and we'll talk about that in a second too. That's a, an E note from D to E, second to first string. It's a real nice haunting sort of sound. So there's your open strings. Let's do it one more time. Fifth string, A high, low D four, low A three, high D two, the lonesome or mysterious E, okay? You almost have a chord there, okay? So from there, let's just go to think about uh, the tuning checkpoints. Because that's a really good thing. I think you should know how to check your frets uh, on each string to match to another string and get your uh, banjo tuned. Even if you don't have your electronic tuner, your battery may not be working and you still want to be able to do it. By ear, of course, you'll get to where you can just do it by ear more and more you play. So here's the, uh, the first string. Let's go up to the fifth fret. And also another thing I'll go ahead and put in there, the three questions. What are the three questions you can ask yourself to help you play melodies or read chord diagrams? And that is which string, which finger, which fret, right? So let's do that right now. Uh, the first string on the fifth fret, and I'm using my second finger. You can use different fingers for different, depends on where you're coming from and where you're going. The fifth fret, first string, is the same as what other string? The short string, right, the fifth string. So the first string, fifth fret, is the same as the open fifth string. Tuning checkpoint. And a really good thing about the banjo, tuning checkpoints are great places to slide to. We're gonna get in some left-hand stuff in a few moments there. So fifth fret, first string, is the short string open. The second string, where do you think you match that to check match up with the first string? It was just one step away. Let's talk about whole and half steps, too. That's something you should know. What is a half step and what is a whole step? A half step is how many frets? Right, one fret. And a whole step would be twice as many. So what would that be? Two frets, right. So let's just think about the second string is a D. And another thing we should think about is the musical alphabet. Do you know the musical alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Whoop, stop right there and start over, right? So the whole steps and half steps, let's think about the second string, D. From D to E is a whole step. So if I wanted to go to E on the second string, I go from open to frets. And that gives me the same note as my first string open. Aha, another tuning checkpoint. Great. And a really good thing to start thinking about, I'll go ahead and put this into your uh, thinking cap. Uh, e to F is a half step on the piano, back-to-back -back white keys. And B to C are back-to-back -back white keys, half step. All the rest... In the musical alphabet are whole steps for the time being. That works out really good. So we'll use that a lot as we do scales in a moment. So the third string is an A, and we want to go up to that D note on an A. So let's think about that. A to B is a whole step. Aha. And B to C be a half step, but in the scale we'd go a whole step and a half step at the top to D. So the fifth fret, and you can use your ear and just find that. Just go up there until you find that next Say, oh, I want my second string open to sound like my third string fretted note. Let's see. There it is. And I'm a little out of tune, so I'm going to tune as I go. There you are, tuning checkpoints, after all. So the fifth fret on the third string, same as the second string open. Five on the first, the same as the open fifth. Second string, second fret. 
matches up, and then the third string, fifth fret matches the second. And the last one, you got that low D, and we want to go all the way to an A on that, so it's going to be a whole step. We're just doing start working on a scale formula too, because that's another thing we need to know. So a whole step and a whole step and a half step in a scale and a whole step, seventh fret. So our tuning checkpoints are fifth fret first string matches the open fifth, second string second fret matches the open first, fifth fret third string matches the open second, and the seventh fret way down there, way down the neck matches the open third. So let's do a scale on one string. That's another thing I think you should know how to do, a major scale. Not too much to ask because guess what uh, comes out of the scale? Melodies and chords. That's your building blocks, really. So uh, it's hard to build a building without some building blocks. So this is a really big factor in playing melodies or chords, the scale. So let's just do uh, the major scale formula. And I've told it to you many times. We'll repeat it right now. You go two whole steps and then a half step. And that's from that third to fourth notch. That's right where the, the cabbages get boiled, the bottom cabbage down. And a B-I-N-G-O, a lot of things happen there. And then we're going to go three whole steps and a half. So I'm going to do it on the low string. And again, we get back to our which, which frets, up the, being able to go up and down the frets on each string and find, somebody says the 10th fret on some string, you can find it right away. Open, fourth string, whole step. We're playing a, a D scale because we're starting on what they call the root, the bottom of the scale. So a whole step to two, whole step, two to four, half step right there to the fifth fret. And now we go a whole step to seven. And look at your markers too, your dots help you too. Whole step to nine, whole step to 11, and a half step, boom, the top of the scale. And that's called an octave, that high note to the low note. Same note, high and low. And guess what, we got that second string, we have that same note way over there on the second string. So one more time, let's do it on the second string, which guess what's the same note, so it's gonna be the same frets, right? Open second string, whole step, whole step, half. Whole step, and get used to what it sounds like, whole step, whole and a half, beautiful. That's a D scale, right? Guess what, we could do that on the, the uh, third string. Let's try that for, that's an A note, so what scale would that be? I think it might be A major with the same, so that same pattern works for uh, any any key. You know, if you're playing a major uh, A or C or F or G scale, it's going to have that same pattern starting from that, the name of the chord and name of the scale note, foundation or the root. Third string, whole step, whole step, half. Whole, whole, whole. And a half step, an A scale. So the next step there, just one other thing you should know how to do is go across the strings with a scale. So I'm gonna do that just in D and let you think about that a little bit. We're gonna do uh, open D, low string, whole, whole, half, right? And we gotta go up to that uh, seventh fret as our tuning checkpoint so we could change strings. So let's go back and start again. Think about that changing strings. That's where your tuning checkpoints come in really handy. Open, whole, whole, half, change strings, whole step though. Whole step on the third string, second fret, whole step. And the next fret's gonna be our tuning checkpoint, so what could you do? Change strings. So I'm gonna do that one more time. And what you can do with the right hand, start doing a brush or something like, you know, your index, get your, and another thing that you should know is what's the difference between claw hammer playing and finger picking uh, the banjo. Claw hammer is usually using the nails and you're wrapping, you know, down on the strings, like sort of like your hands in a claw, like a hammer. So, your nails are wrapping down, finger picking, you'd be picking up towards the short string. You know, you'd be using the flesh of your fingers, picking up, claw hammer, you're wrapping down. And you, a lot of people combine all kinds of styles, but it's good to know the basic difference there. So I'm using the claw hammer style, and I'll just do that D scale with a brush in between. Open four, second fret, fourth fret, half step, chain strings, third string, whole step, whole step, chain strings, Beautiful, and you can put a D chord in there. So let's think about that. I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, let's think about uh, another thing you should know is how to play the three main chords at least in uh, about three keys at least, a good start. So let's look at that for a second because that's exciting that you can do the same song in different keys. You have a singer that comes up and you've always played a song in D and they say, well, okay, I have to do that in G and you're in a D tuning, so it's good to know how to play G, the key of G, in a D tuning, they're the chords. So here's, let's just do our a D 
G and A chord, and that would also be called uh, by a number system. What numbers would they be called? That's another thing it would be good to kind of think about what it is. The one, four, five. And remember, if you just think about your hand, say this is my D chord, D note. Just think of your musical alphabet, D, E, F, G, and A. One, two, three, four, five. So D is one, E, F, G is four, and A is five. So you get used to finding that, uh, thinking about that. So the one four five system is good to know. If somebody says this is just a one four five in D, and you'd be ready to go. So my D chord looks like that: second fret, first string, right? Okay, good. And then my G chord is going to have that third fret on the first string. That, and I want think about that for a second, because you have uh, E F sharp, you have a G note right there. That's going to be our G note. So it's good to know which note of the chord you have too on each string. That's another whole thing to think about. A lot of levels. My G chord has also the third string, second fret. And this is kind of a reference, so keep in mind, I'm throwing a lot at you, but this is stuff I think you should know or be working on. So your D chord, second fret, your G chord is the four chord, and the A chord is that second fret, second string. And you can play just the first three strings, but it's good to also get that low second fret if you need it for a low, nice bass. Right? One chord, four chord, five chord. You kind of hear it sounds like old rock and roll songs, you know? La Bamba. A lot of songs just go around what they call around the horn, one, four, five. One, four, five. And a really good thing to just kind of keep in mind is if you think of violin cabbage down, it goes from the one chord to the four chord and back to the one. Right? Violin cabbage down, make those biscuits brown. The only tune that I can play. And then it goes to the five chord. A to D. Okay, so let's look at that uh, for a second. Let's go to another key. Let's start on, I think you should know, maybe the key of G. Start with the G. There's your one chord. And one of those notes is going to go a half step. So you remember on that D, I went from had that half step. Find the note that goes half step, and you'll start to find the other chord. So here's my G chord, one chord in G. And I'm going to go to half step in the third string, and you just got to put the first finger on the second fret and make a little triangle. That's the C chord, the four chord in G. Cool. So G to C. Right, let's go back to the G. And then we already know D is the five chords. And you hear the same sound, G. Do that triangle, C. Back to G. Very nice. Let's do that a few more times. G, C, half step in the bass, so to speak. G and D. And then the other key, why don't we, why don't we think about the key of A for our last uh, of three keys you can play the, the one, four, five in, okay? So here we go. There's my D, G, A, and on the A chord, let's go ahead and play that low second fret too. So we got second fret, fourth string, low. I'm using my first finger. And then you got the second fret, second string. So now we're gonna do, what would be the one, four, five, and A? Let's think about that second. Hmm, okay, get my hand out here. I happen to have it handy. No pun intended. A, one, B, C, D, four. What's after D? E, five. Okay, so A is A. D and E. Well, we already know A and D, so we just got to find an E chord. Cool. So here's the start with A. And see if we can hear that same kind of violin cabbage down by D chord. Just that jumping over to the first string, second fret. Go back to A. And I'm going to give you a nice, easy E. You can just get that uh, third string, second fret, just like a straight across, two, two, and two on the bass string. You get a nice droney E. You how pretty that is? So let's start with the uh, A, A, D, and I go to the E. Just get used to the sound of the one, four, five in different keys. A. Very nice. So I'm going to do all three keys one more time. And just think about those shapes. They're all pretty handy and close. So D to G. And I'll just go to A. Okay. Right. One more time. D to G and A. One, four, five. And D. Now I'm starting on my G chord. G, C, D. Sounds nice. G, C, and D. Then I'm going to go to A. A, D, and E. Nice. Very cool. And some other questions just to think about uh, left hand techniques. Let's go ahead and think about that. What are your three main uh, techniques with the left hand that the banjo players use all the time? Uh, let's see. Let me think. I could think of a uh, hammer. A pull off and a slide. That's the three things that come to mind. And let's just do a little exercise real quick to remind you of that. And so uh, let's just take the first string and open string hammer to the second fret. And let's just add the fifth string after hammer. Just 
just add a note after you kind of get more more fun for the practice there hammer okay and a pull off is going to be starting with two and pulling side you pick it with the right hand pull off hammer pull off and i might hit the second string after that pull off so hammer five pull off two and i'm gonna make a little exercise let's go ahead and go to the third string after that and pick the third string and I'm going to fret the second string, second fret, third string, and slide from two to four. Slide. And then the second string is a scale. Listen to the exercise, and I'll describe it one more time. Hammer five, pull off two. Third string, slide. Second string. Nice. Hammer, pull off, slide right there. And you can slide anywhere slide up or back, right? Same note on the low string. And one other thing about that, before I move on to another thing, is you can hammer from a fretted string. You could hit the second fret, pick that, and then hammer with my second finger on the third fret. Hammer, pull off. You could just go up strings and do, you know, whole step or half step hammers. Hammer, pull off. Sounds really good, huh? Hammer, pull off. Hammer, pull off. Hammer, pull off. Got a little song. I could put some words to that and might have the next old time hit. I like that. Put some words to that and see what you come up with. Okay. Uh, a couple other things. Just some other words. Do you know what the downbeat and the upbeat are when you play a song? If you're tapping your foot, it's a good way to do it. You tap your foot down. Boom. Say we're playing a four-beat song, and you know, two of the most common songs are one's four beats and one's three beats. A waltz is three beats. So with four beats, one, two, three, four, tap, 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 tap. That's down, 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 down. And when you're raising your foot up, that's the upbeat. Like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. One, two, and three, and four, and and you have something called syncopation. It's something we've talked about. Syncopation is when you really, instead of stressing that down, like a drummer would have that downbeat going really good, you'd have a, you'd be stressing the up. Bop, 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 bop. So syncopation is cool. Uh, downbeats, upbeats. Anticipation is where you got to kind of plan ahead if you're uh, playing a song. And the, especially fiddlers, a lot of times will jump right in there with the next phrase. You got to be right there with them. And of course, the banjo plays with the fiddle a lot. Uh, what I think you should really think about, too, is uh, we'll get into a, a song or two to wind up here for this. What's an arpeggio? We've talked about that with where, Where's My Little Dog Gone. Arpeggios, you remember what that is? It's the notes of a chord, but you play them one at a time. So like we did a D arpeggio, is that open and that major two-hole step jump and the next string. If you're thinking of the notes of scale, it's one, three, and five, but it's just the three notes of a D chord. D actual notes are D, F, sharp, and A. So you can start to climb up and down. The A string, same pattern, open four, and the first string. So what you do, you use those ears and get used to finding those, those notes in different chords. Cool. Like I said, if I did a G scale, just to back up on that, if you get used to what a scale sounds like, start with that fifth fret low, right? Open next string. Whole step, half step, and I could go a whole step there, but I could change strings because of the tuning checkpoint. And again, the tuning checkpoint, whole step, and it's always a half step at the top of the scale. Pretty cool. So uh, let's go ahead and think about some songs we've done. There's a wind up here. Uh, we did uh, Two Dollar Bill, Groundhog, Ain't Gonna Work Tomorrow, Mole in the Ground, Cluck Old Hen, Crawdad Song, Lost Indian, Ain't Gonna Rain No More, Black Eyed Susie, Sail Away Ladies. We did a lot of songs. Let's just pick a couple of easy ones. Say we're doing... Uh, Two dollar bill in D. So the main, the chords there. Lost all my money, but two dollar bill, two dollar bill, G back to D. So this is just D. Lost all my money, but two dollar bill and the G and the five. So you get all three chords in there. It goes from the one to the four and one to five. So let's just to melody that is a uh, one last thing on the chord. You want to know where the name of your chord, the root is, and the major note, that pretty major, or the droney note, because those three notes of the chord, the melodies are going to start on one of those places. This one actually starts on that fifth notch. To the G, back to D. Do a verse. Lost all my money but a two dollar bill. Two 
dollar bill, boys, a two dollar bill. Lost all my money but a two dollar bill, and I'm on my long journey home. You can play it, you can play it like a Make up words, you know, it's cloudy in the east, it looks like rain. Uh, and you repeat that a uh, lot of, you know, you repeat the line a lot in that song, so that's a nice one to do because you don't have to remember too many words. We did, uh, let's see, what else did we do? We did Groundhog, remember we played it up high? Also try playing that low. Find it. You don't have all of there. So if you run out of room low, you got to kind of move back up to the, the middle or high territory, right? Uh, something to think about too is uh, the different players. I want you to uh, think about players, fiddlers and banjo players, Kyle Creed, Wade Ward, Tommy Gerald, Benton Flippin, Uncle Charlie Higgins, Norm Edmonds. You know, go and look on YouTube and find them. There's something called slipperyhill.com. You can go and hear old 78 records. Oh, Slippery Dash Hill, I'm told. Slippery Dash Hill.com. If you just type in Slippery Hill, I think it'll pop up. But uh, yeah, it's got old recordings. But listen to the old recordings, the old players, and a lot of videos on YouTube of the great players. And watch those banjo players. You'll learn something. And remember, you can slow down the video. Uh, you know, at that little cog wheel on the right, you can hit, click that and slow it down a little bit. So you can grab it. You can slow it down a lot if you want to. The, the singing or talking will sound weird, but uh, don't let that stop you. All right? So just be uh, be happy that you're playing the banjo and think about all these things. See, you know, uh, what you have a good handle on and what you might need to work on. I'll play one more little song. We'll wind up. But uh, what do I do? Uh, let's see. I go to work tomorrow. That's another. In the same, you'll notice a lot of songs operate in the same territory, right? So this is, you could almost start that. Oh, I ain't going to work. And I'll close with uh, just if you know which note, uh, which string, what note they are on the chord, you can play a bluesy chord. And I'll close with just uh, one thing we did work on was playing bluesy D, G, right? And A. So let's just look at that to wind up with that. Just got your D. If I know where my D is, okay, and I know how I know my tuning checkpoints here. So if you go a whole step back instead of the half step and add that note in there. So I got that second fret first string and I can put that third fret on the third string. You got a nice bluesy D. So regular open third string and then the third fret bluesy. You can also think about it like a climbing up with a bluesy lick like Old Joe Clark. He had a house or a boogie woogie. So if you know where the boogie woogie note is, it's that droney note. There's my bluesy D. And now my G chord, here's my regular G. And I know my G is the first string. I can take it back and get the same shape. Oh, that sounds good. So D is the second fret. And the first fret, remember, was the G. And you could go to the third fret for A. But I'm going to show you another one. Let's play our A with the second fret, second string, and take the, the drony first string up. That's a beautiful one, too. So listen to those three chords. D, D7, G, and G7, and D, and D7, and then the A to A7. So you get bluesy with that, right? You might feel bluesy someday, and the banjo's a great way to just relax. And the last chord reminder is we had a really nice long A, that fifth fret and second fret. 
we took it up to that 7-4 for a B minor, a cool sound. And then we took it all the way up to 10 and 7 for a long D. So just the last thing, maybe we can do open and second fret for just D chords. 4 and 5 for a beautiful D chord. And then 7 and 10. That's the last thing to try. So just the three Ds, like a what they call inversions. You're climbing up, just like a bugle player moves up with those. Right? So keep on playing the songs, think about all these things, and review this, and see what you know and uh, what you need to work on, right? Mainly have fun playing the banjo. Make up a song or play the ones you know, and uh, it'll be a lifelong reward for you. So enjoy your banjos. Thanks a bunch.